Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, as you guys are coming in, um, please feel free to use the chat um, and introduce yourself, um, your name, your organization, and where you're joining us from. And we'll get started in just a second as everyone's just getting situated in. All right, um, as you guys are joining in, as I mentioned, please feel free to use the chat to introduce yourself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Lisa and I am the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. I am so excited to talk with you guys um, about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising today. Uh, we have a lot to discuss, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in. So for today's webinar, we're going to be talking about what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, some of you have done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before, and for others, it may be a completely brand new topic. So we'll be talking about what exactly it means, um, and also what it means on Mighty Cause in particular. Uh, we'll also talk about how to recruit participants and build and manage your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. And then we'll also go through just some examples of different peer-to-peer -peer campaigns that we've seen on the platform. All right, so before I jump in to the webinar, um, I should also note that there is a chat box, but there's also a Q&A box. If for any questions that you have, please feel free to add them in the Q&A box. It's easier just for me to see if any question pops up. We'll have a section for questions at the end, but I may uh, check in and see if there are any questions there throughout the webinar. Uh, the slides will be provided after the webinar as well as the recording. All right, so before we jump into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, I just wanted to also highlight our Giving Tuesday event. Every year, Mighty Cause hosts a Giving Tuesday event on our platform. It's a 27-hour fundraising event, so it starts midnight of Giving Tuesday, and it ends uh, Pacific Standard Time um, when Giving Tuesday ends, so 3 a.m. on the 29th. Uh, you can feel free to register on givingtuesday.mightycause.com. It is completely free to register. There are no fees or anything to register. Um, registration ends at the end of this month. So I encourage you, if you haven't registered yet, to register. If you are joining us and are participating in um, one of the awesome fundraising events that utilize Mighty Cause, such as Georgia Gives, for example, on Mighty Cause, um, you want to make sure that you're registered for the correct event that you're participating in. For our Giving Tuesday event on Mighty Cause, our early giving starts November 14th, and then of course it all um, culminates to the 28th, um, which is Giving Tuesday. So a couple of things about Mighty Cause. If you are interested in joining our Giving Tuesday event, we have a lot of awesome tools uh, that you can utilize for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, some of them peer-to-peer -peer related that we'll talk through. Um, we also have uh, templates, uh, graphics, um, tips, trainings, webinars, um, a lot of stuff that you can utilize to help build your campaign on uh, for Giving Tuesday. As well, we'll also have prizes. We'll be announcing prizes a little bit later in the month, um, but there will be prizes for participating organizations. Uh, all right. So now that we've talked about Mighty Cause, uh, let's jump into what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So as I mentioned, for some of you, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a brand new topic and others are familiar with it. Either you've participated in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign or you've managed one before. But the idea of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is that it's a strategy tool, a fundraising strategy tool and a technique where you leverage the existing support network that you have, which we'll talk about, and that includes your board members, your volunteers, your staff, major donors, etc. So you're utilizing your existing support network, and they're helping you bring in new supporters by them asking their network of people to donate 
um, to your organization. Um, so it is a way to reach new donors that you've never been able to really reach before because of that connection that you're bridging through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So just a small graphic that kind of helps break down peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. The idea behind it is that you have your organization, you have your participants, people that are fundraising actively for your nonprofit. They are sending out their own page, their fundraising efforts to their friends and family. And that is that connection that you're creating um, and resulting in donations, new donors, and also new people finding out about your organization, what it does, your impact and your mission. So a common question that we get is, well, why would someone be interested in participating in a peer-to-peer? -peer? That's a great idea of having people fundraise actively for your nonprofit, but why would someone actively want to go out of their way and fundraise? So one, it deepens your relationship of, with your donors or your supporters. It's a different relationship and a different ask that you are asking. So instead of a, a call to action of donate, the ask is non-monetary, it's help us fundraise, you know, share your story of why this mission and cause is important to you, to your family and friends. Um, there are a connect, there's a group of people, I'm sure, around your organization that have a reason why they want to support your nonprofit, whether it's because it's a personal story or because your cause is close to them. Um, and so those are all different reasons why someone would be interested in helping um, fundraise for your organization and sharing that mission to their friends and family and coworkers. So a couple of different examples of peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, just so that we can kind of get the ball rolling. And we'll talk about a, a couple of other examples a little later. Um, but most commonly, when a lot of people think about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, they think about a charity walk or run um, where someone is running or walking um, for a, a thon, a walk-a-thon, marathon, um, and then they have their own fundraising page and they're asking their social network to support their, you know, pledge to run or walk um, and making don and receiving donations that way. Birthday fundraisers are also a peer-to-peer -peer campaign that sometimes people don't assume is peer-to-peer, -peer, but it is because it is someone in your network that has a birthday. They have a personal, you know, want to give back for their birthday by asking their friends and family to, you know, support a cause that's dear to them. And again, that's still applying that peer-to-peer -peer, um, idea, which is having someone in your network fundraise on behalf of your organization. Um, campaign add-ons. So if your nonprofit is running a fundraising campaign and you also want to ask uh, for peer-to-peer, -peer, that's also, I think, um, a common way that a lot of nonprofits also utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is they may have an overarching campaign and in invite board members or volunteers to fundraise on behalf of the, or for the organization um, associated with their campaign. Again, we'll show kind of some examples of that a little later on. Uh, so giving events are also um, a, a large form of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns where nonprofits will kind of have a specific day where they're um, recruiting supporters to uh, raise funds, like Giving Tuesday as an example, and a board challenge. Uh, so. This is something that we also see really commonly for actually Giving Tuesday event or giving events like Giving Tuesday, where board members will come together and commit to fundraise for their nonprofit. All right, so as we kind of go through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, there are, there's a couple of terminology that I wanted to go through to help define when we talk about team and event, what does that mean on the platform? Because those terms are in itself, they're a bit broad, but when we on Mighty Cause talk about team, event, and some other terms, what does that mean? 
So when we talk about a team on Mighty Cause, what we're talking about is a group fundraising page where partic participants fundraise individually towards a collective goal. So it's a group page where everyone has their own individual page within the group page. And we'll get into that a little bit later. An event fundraising page is when you combine teams and individuals together, um, where you may have people that are in groups, such as, you know, maybe it's a grade or a class within a school, and then you have the overall event that um, comprises all of those teams um, and individuals. When you hear the term campaign, that can refer to basically any fundraising page that is not your organization profile page on Mighty Cause. So that can be a fundraiser or team or event page. We refer to all of those as a campaign page because you could run a fundraising campaign on any one of those pages. A fundraiser is an individual fundraising page. It's, and it's also going to refer to a specific person that's hosting or, or creating the fundraising page. So for example, a board member that has created, you know, a birthday fundraising page for your organization. A team member or an event member would be a participant in either a team or event. And a supporter is anyone in your community that supports your organization. So a donor, fundraiser, volunteer, et cetera. It's your support network. Okay, now that we've talked about what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we're gonna dive a little bit into recruiting participants and how do you get people to actually participate and create a fundraiser for your organization. So before we jump into exactly the ask um, towards your support network, I always make sure to kind of reinforce that you want to think about what's your overall goal for your campaign. So if you've decided on doing a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, what is your overall mission out of it? It is, is it a certain dollars raised? Is it uh, to have participants or your support network more engaged? Is it a unique donor amount? Um, so think about what are your high level goals and also your short term goals for Giving Tuesday, because when you have an idea of what your goals are, it makes it easier to then clarify and make that ask towards participants. If our goal is we want to raise $10,000 or we want we want to raise $10,000 so that we can, you know, purchase 200 backpacks for students in need. That's a really clear and defined goal um, that you can go to to prospective participants and say, hey, here's our goal. We need, you know, 13 people to raise $100 for us to raise that goal. And I'm just making these numbers up. But Having that overall goal can help clarify to participants exactly what you're asking and why you're needing help. Um, so when we look, think about what are potential participants for a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, there isn't I should say first, there isn't a specific set standard. It doesn't have to be a certain type of person. Most commonly, what you're going to see for participants is it's going to be your board members. Well, like we talked about a little bit, a board challenge is a really common peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Volunteers, or um, I should say uh, your, um, you know, people in your support network that are closely tied. Um, your staff. Um, so people at your nonprofit, um, program alumni, if you do have an alumni program, and I see that that's duplicated, but um, also any, you know, major donors or donors that, um, you know, are heavily involved in your organization that, again, as I mentioned, it's a different ask that you're asking. So 
when an individual is asked to participate in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, the first thing they're going to ask is, what do I have to do? And so the first thing is to make sure that the process is as easy as possible. One of the things that you can do on the platform, which we'll talk about a little later, is create a fundraiser template. Um, through a fundraiser template, you can fill in the blank with a lot of the details on a fundraising page, such as the description, the image, the like goal amount, you know, something that may take someone an extra, extra time to think through. You can fill all of that out for the individual so that all they have to do is really click on a button um, and, you know, publish their page and then they have it done. Um, as I talked about also in terms of making the ask is, creating what is the goal, like what are the expectations of this individual? And that's going to be different for every event. For some, you may have a high goal because maybe it is a board challenge and you have high expectations for your board members. Or maybe it's a smaller goal where you're looking just for, you know, a hundred dollars for a participant to raise. Um, that's really for you to decide, but it's helpful to kind of clear um, set those expectations up to participants. Um, and also, as I mentioned, um, although there is a template that you can provide that they can easily use, uh, it is also an opportunity for them to tell their own story. So although you can fill in the blank for a lot of that information, you can also leave them space to kind of share that story for them. So something that also is I think a helpful um, motivator in terms of having people participate and not only having people to participate, but once they've kind of signed on, keeping them engaged is to provide incentives to get people excited and motivated for your event. Prizes are a great way to kind of encourage participation. And, you know, on this webinar, we have all a huge array of different nonprofits, some big, some small, some medium. So some may not have the funds to provide, you know, a large prize. And so think what is at your disposal? Maybe that is any free merch that you can provide. So a t-shirt, pens, stickers, any nonprofit merch that you have, or maybe it's, you know, a lunch out or dinner out with your executive director or, you know, the top three winners get a pizza party at your office. Um, or maybe there are donated prizes that you can receive at your local business, um, you know, at your local Starbucks, um, if, you know, donated gift cards, coffee, etc. cetera. Um, these little incentives are a great kind of motivator um, for your participants to not only feel excited for the event, but to, you know, continuously um, participate in it as well. So creating and setting up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign can feel um, overwhelming because there might be some, you know, balls that you have to juggle. Uh, so involve your board if possible in the event. And if you don't have, you know, an active board, whoever is on your team or whoever that you can kind of um, use as a support, um, as a support system. So in terms of your board, you know, see if there are any yearly commitments that your board is required to have, review their progress to see if that's, you know, a way that they can help participate in a peer-to-peer um, -peer campaign, and also share your plans and assign specific roles. So maybe for a board member, it's try to find a match or providing a match for your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Maybe it's fundraising in itself, or maybe it's handling the details of a physical location if you are looking to have a physical location. Um, there's a lot that you can do with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And so use your network at your disposal um, to help kind of delegate tasks. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about recruiting participants um, and making that ask, we're gonna talk about building a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So when we talk about building a peer-to-peer -peer campaign on mightycause.com, 
um, or mighty cause, you know, in general. Uh, the easiest way of building a peer-to-peer -peer campaign is by going to your organization page and clicking fundraise. And then you will be provided uh, a pop-up that says create a fundraiser and you would just select other solutions. And then this will take you to a page where you can decide if you wanna create a, an event, a team or a fundraiser. So the different types of peer-to-peer -peer pages, we talked a little bit about this, but as an example, so a fundraiser page like you see here, it's just an individual fundraising page. Um, so it is specific to, it, it only has one donate button and it represents kind of one entity. So it could technically be maybe a family um, as an example, a family doesn't need, you know, each person in the family doesn't need their own fundraising page. They just need one page that represents themselves. Um, and that also could be a company as well, right? A company, they may not need a lot of different fundraising page. They just need one page that represents themselves. So that is what a fundraiser page looks like and does. A team is going to add up those individual fundraising pages and be a group setting for those individuals um, to work together and raise money together. So it's a central page for all of those individuals to come together to raise money. So as you see in this example here, there's a leaderboard and you see that there are individuals in that leaderboard and that all kind of culminates to this team page. Um, And, and then an event page would allow you to have multiples of those teams and individuals on the page. So you could have, um, as I showed you, a lot of those different group pages all in one team that all go towards a collective funding goal. So as an example here, just to kind of show you again, the hierarchy and how it all works, we have on the left-hand side, a readathon. And so the readathon is composed of different teams that represent grades within the school. And then within the school, you have, uh, or I'm sorry, within each grade, which within each team, you have the individual students page that they would share with their friends and family. So this is just an example of kind of the hierarchy of event team and fundraiser. You don't have to use each one of these, right? You could use just one of them, um, don't have to use all three, but it's helpful to understand kind of how it's all broken down in our platform so that depending on what you want, you can decide how you want to utilize the pages that we have available. I'm gonna take a pause here and kind of look at the different questions that we have. Um, what if you already have account through Mighty Cause? Do you need to register or just log into your account? Um, so depending on if you're on mightycause.com, depending on your subscription or your account, you may be able to um, create peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages. Um, but if you're registered for Giving Tuesday, you will be able to. All right, so just some other questions. Um, will it be possible to have a copy of the presentation? Yes, you'll be able to have a copy of the presentation that will be provided and that will also be added to the webinar section of our Giving Tuesday Toolkit. How do you create a peer-to-peer -peer instead of a fundraiser? Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about each different one and then the actual like creation process of it. Um, we talked a little bit about it, um, but it's gonna be dependent on what exactly you need. All right. So just a couple, just a breakdown of team and event versus fundraising pages. So for team and events, uh, what you're going to have is the ability for people to actually join your event. So I'm just going to go back for a second. Um, so as you see on the left-hand side, um, you see this join this event button on the left-hand side. That's where individuals can go and join the event as in, you know, join and be a participant. 
Uh, there's leaderboards so that if you want that competition aspect and you want people to see how others are performing or are raising money, um, you can, it will have that leaderboard portion. It will also have the fundraiser templates um, specific to that team or event and also ability to kind of manage all your participants related to that. A fundraiser will is is really just a standalone page and is perfect for a crowdfunding campaign like a birthday fundraiser. So it's really not pulling together that like team oriented kind of group oriented um, system like a, a team or event would. Um, Okay, so managing your campaign. So when you're utilizing the platform in terms of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, when you create your team or event on the platform through the process that I showed you of like clicking fundraise and selecting the type of page that you want, you're gonna have a dashboard on your left-hand side and that's gonna be how you can manage and edit your page on the platform. So I talked about a little bit earlier about fundraiser templates and how that's a really great way to make it easy for participants to get involved, to easily fundraise for your organization. So on each team and event fundraising page that you create, you can add a template. So um, this kind of takes the fear out of fundraising for a lot of individuals. Like I said, for example, the just adding a description can be, you know, something that can hold off on someone creating a fundraising page. So filling in that information allows don't or allows participants the ease of just getting quickly on and starting to share with friends and family. You can customize your template. Um, you don't have to fill out every single aspect. So you can pick and choose if you do want to add a goal or if you do want to add a set image, that's totally up to you to determine, you know, what you want to set up for each one. And then when an individual goes and creates their fundraiser through your team or event, as you saw with the join this event button or join this team button, um, that template's going to be auto added in. So as I just mentioned, the join this event button or join this team button is going to be right um, on the front of your page. So this is where you will want to direct people to start fundraising or start participating in your campaign. Um, this will really be the start of it. And when people go through by clicking the join this event or join this team, they're going to be automatically synced with your team or event. And that template that you've added will automatically be synced um, with the page that they're creating. Mm -hmm. Their new page, once it's published, will be added to the leaderboard. And those funds that are made on their individual page will all accrue to your overall leader or to your overall goal. So for some um, peer to peer campaigns, you may not want it to be a public event. So you may not want to have a join this event button, you know, right on your page. Maybe for example, it is a board challenge and you don't want to have anyone else creating a page on that. Um, team or event that you've created. Uh, something that you can do in your settings is um, update your membership perm permissions. Uh, making the event invite only uh, allows, removes that join this button from your page. Um, so only individuals that you're inviting will be able to create a page. To invite individuals to your fundraising page, there is a section on your dashboard dashboard called participants, where you can invite an unlimited amount of individuals via email um, to start fundraising for your organization. The, once you put in their email information, an invite email will be sent to them with a link to create a fundraising page for your organization. Additionally, on your uh, fundraising page, uh, or on your, I'm sorry, your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page, there will be leaderboard on your team or event that lists out the different participates, participants in your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. You can manage your leaderboard and decide how you want individuals to be ranked. 
So for example, let's say you do want a leaderboard, but you don't want to make it competitive. You kind of just want to show people where, how much they've raised. You can set your leaderboard to be in alphabetical order. So it's not as competitive where people are seeing who's first and who's last. You're really just kind of sharing the progress that people are making and making it a more, you know, uh, a, a less competitive experience. If you do want it competitive, you can um, have your leaderboard ranked by uh, donors or donations. Uh, I'm sorry, um, dollars raised. Um, On the left hand side as well on your dashboard um, for your team and event pages, you'll two, you'll see two different sections listed um, that is called campaigns and participants. I wanted to highlight this section because this can sometimes be confusing for people that are creating an event or team on the platform um, because they're a bit similar but a bit different areas. So campaigns refers to any fundraising page or team fundraising page that has been created a part of your um, team or event. So as you see in the screenshot here, it will list um, that campaign name and when it was published and how much was raised. Uh, the participant section will be listed by the actual participant of the page and not the campaign. Um, and this is where also you can invite individuals to um, to uh, join your event or team. Um, so the difference is campaigns is really more relaying the exact like campaign name and the type of campaigns you have, where participants is more about who the actual organizer, who's actually creating that page uh, and being able to contact them. With on a fundraising page, you have the ability to set a goal bar, a donor timeline, social sharing options. So whether you're part of like a team or event or you're standalone, um, you are able to help um, update or change again based off that template. Um, what you would like, you know, what you want your participants to have on their specific fundraising pages. I'm gonna just take a quick pause and look through questions. Okay, can this work more in favor for one group against the other? Um, I'm not sure exactly the question there. Um, so if you could just clarify that and I can help answer. Um, how do I, how can I leverage Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp to recruit participants and donors? Is there an automated way? Um, so yeah, in terms of social media, I think that is a great avenue, but I do think for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, the best way is um, going the personal route and directly reaching out to individuals because Again, it kind of depends on what your peer-to-peer -peer campaign is, right? So if you have a walkathon, that's a little bit different than if you have a board challenge. So it, it does depend on what exactly your peer-to-peer -peer campaign is. However, I think if you're planning on something smaller, not necessarily a walkathon or a marathon, um, and it's your first year doing so, doing personal outreach, I think is the best way because it may take you know, you may have to explain exactly what is, what are the expectations for someone to participate? What do they have to do? And you're also, especially if this is your first year, you may need to reach out to the people that are most connected to your nonprofit that are, you know, most likely want to kind of share your mission and um, your impact to their friends and family. Um. In terms of being able to recruit people in an automated way, using our participants tool, I think is a really easy um, and helpful way. All you have to do is just plug in their email and then a link to create a fundraiser will be sent um, to them. Again, that is not, there still may be some questions or asks that you may have to do further, but that's an easy way to for you to 
have an auto email that's sent out. Um, okay. Um, how can you require peer-to-peer -peer participants outside of your organization's network? Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about um, at the end with some examples of different peer-to-peer -peer fundraising ideas. And I think that um, the best way to acquire peer-to-peer -peer participants outside of your organi organization's network is going to be based off kind of the overall campaign that you're doing. So like I said, a walkathon versus a board challenge or something that is, you know, a general, like, you know, if you create a general team page, right? A walkathon, you're going to attract more people because that has that community aspect of it, as opposed to just, you know, something that doesn't really have anything more specific. And it's really just a peer to peer campaign that you've created. Um, I went to register for Giving Tuesday, but I got a message that we've already submitted registration request. Does this mean we're already registered? Yes. If you've gotten that, that means someone at your organization has already registered. Are raffle prizes allowed to promote fundraising? So on mightycause.com, um, that's a good question because I think it's important to distinguish. So on mightycause.com for context, all donations that are processed through mightycause.com are processed through a donor advised fund, Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. So when donations are processed through a donor advised fund, you are not allowed to promise um, goods in exchange for a donation. So in terms of asking for a donation, you cannot promise prizes for donors. However, for participants that are not making a donation, but if you're trying to encourage them to reach out to more friends and family, to network, to even participate, that's okay because you're not soliciting a gift in, ex in, in exchange for goods and prizes. I hope that makes sense. Um, um, regarding dollars raised, how much should we expect from each fundraiser? Is there an average dollar amount that we can expect from each participant? So I think that's also a really great question. And that's really going to depend on each of your organizations separately and also each of your participants that are going to participate. So I keep referring back to board challenge just because that's a very easy example, but for example, for some nonprofits, their board has a requirement for how much money that they're responsible for donating or bringing in to their nonprofit. So their dollars, their goal for each participant for a board challenge may be different um, based off, you know, another challenge. Um, I think in terms of the average like dollar amount or the average goal set, I think that's where the first step of kind of setting your own goals of what is your overall arching goal for your event. So if it's $10,000 and you have an idea of how many people on average, maybe that you think would be able to participate, you can then kind of get an average dollar amount. Now, maybe that will change what your overall goal is. Maybe that will say, well, I don't think that we'll be able to have people raise $5,000. Um, and so you can adjust from there, but I think first deciding on what is your overall goal and also looking at what is the average dollar amounts that you have received in general, um, over the year, um, to help kind of predict of what is a realistic goal for participants. And as well, you know, for some peer to peer campaigns, they allow the goal to be open to the individual. So it really just depends on your participants and knowing them well enough if a goal is a great motivator for them or if it's better to leave it open-ended for your first year and maybe set a smaller goal and have, you know, maybe hopefully them achieve more than your goal that you're setting. Um, will you be walking through the process of setting up a team fundraising program? Um, I don't think we'll have time at the end, but I will provide um, resources as to where to go to walk through that process. But it's really easy once you figure out once you where, where once you know where to go. Um, if many of an organization's volunteers are not social media users, is that is this a bad way to do? It seems like for it to work, this um, those involved must use social media. So not necessarily. Um, I think, again, 
the benefit of a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign is not necessarily that you're going to have people, you know, social media influencers that are sharing your, your page on their social. Obviously, that is a really great aspect of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which is getting your name out there, sharing it on social or, you know, through commu email communication, et cetera, getting people knowing about your organization. But at the same time, right, the goal of it or the the benefit of it is that they're sharing it with their, your social network in terms of their friends and family, their coworkers, right? So even if they're not sharing on social media, it still can be really useful tool because if I share my peer-to-peer -peer campaign to my coworkers and say, hey, I'm raising money for Homeward Trails in this example. I adopted my dog from this organization. They're really awesome. They do really great work in, um, you know, rescuing animals in, in this area. If you guys can make a donation to my page, that would be great, right? That is so powerful um, because that is, again, sharing that mission in that, in your organization to new people that you wouldn't have been able to reach before. And that's not through social media. That's just through word of mouth. That's just through their personal connections. Okay, when an individual does peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for an organization, will the disbursement setting that that have set in our organization page automatically included? Yes. With all of these different types of pages that we've talked through, um, your disbursements are going to be di or dispersed all the same. It's all going to be accumulated together and it will be dispersed to your organization. In lieu of monetary goals, can goals be set for other metrics or schools, such as growing Facebook social media likes, newsletter subscriptions, attending for event, etc. Yes. So in terms of the actual fundraising page, right, we have a set thermometer and there is going to be right a goal of a monetary goal. But I think internally as a nonprofit, I think having those different types of goals is I think a really awesome to have, right? Because anytime you have a goal, then you can set up a strategy to work towards that goal. So if your goal is getting newsletter subscribers and you're going to go do that through a newsletter or through a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, adding, you know, that information to your emails afterwards or including that, you know, in your template, you know, for more information in the description, like, you know, sign up for a newsletter here. Um, so having those goals, I think is really, is really great. Uh, uh, how do we find out if we already registered for Giving Tuesday? Uh, you can do so um, on your organization page. Um, if you go to givingtuesday.com and you go to uh, through your to your organization page, you should be able to see if you're registered. If not, you can contact our support team. Um, I'm going to get to the other questions, but I'm just going to continue on because we don't have a lot of time. So I just want to make sure that we can get through it. So in terms of creating a fundraiser outside of a team or an event, um, it is a really simple process if you're just looking, if an individual like a board member is looking to create a fundraiser and you're not creating an, a team or an event, um, they can simply just go to your organization page, click fundraise, get started and build a fundraiser. On your org page, you do also have a separate template that you can create. One thing to note about the template on your org page is that that is completely separate to the template on a uh, team or event. So a template on your org page is just related to individual fundraisers that are created for your org. It's not tied to any team or event. All right. And lastly, um, for managing your campaign, there is a donations report that you'll have access to. So you can see specifically on your team or event all of the donations that have made specifically to that team or event, you also have a donations report in your organization page that you'll be able to um, also keep track of. But this is a great way to kind of concisely see all of those donations. Additionally, if you want to add any offline gifts that are associated to a team or event or an individual participating in a team or event, you can add offline gifts through your page. Um, uh, through your team and event page and that will count towards any participants um, that you want to select. All right, so some peer-to-peer -peer examples that I wanted to go through that I think can help 
um, answer some of the questions that we had. Um, so board challenge, we talked a lot about. This is a team fundraising page. So as you see, this is just a board challenge with seven participants. So we don't have, you know, it's not a ton. It's all of the board members. Each of the board members are listed on the leaderboard. It's by dollars raised. If we were to click on the individual um, on the leaderboard, um, that leaderboard would, uh, um, that the, it would go to each specific uh, board member and their page. Um, and I am just pulling that up right now. Um, and then as you see here with the join this team, that allows for any new board member to um, join if they want to. Um, but then the donate button is right there. Um, and if you were to click donate, you can also decide if you want to donate to uh, a specific um, board member or if you want to, I'm just pulling this up right here. This is loading. Oops. One second. Just gotta. Lock in here and I will be able to share that example. One second. And as I do that, I'll just answer one more question. If you invite someone to create a campaign, do they need to create a Mighty Cause account? Great question. Yes, they're going to be prompted to create an account because you have to have an account in order to create a page, right? So like if you were to, for example, you know, edit your page and you wanted to come back and edit it again, you're going to have to have an account so you can log in and log out. Um, all right, so. All right, so I have the page here. Oops, I have uh, I have the older page, so I apologize. Uh, but it will link back, and I'll show another example. All right, so if we're talking about getting creative in terms of um, the type of campaign that you want to have. Um, and again, kind of we're talking about how do we get participants? This is a really, um, I love this campaign because I think it's a way that how do you get people involved and it's having a, a fun peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So this is Wild Pans by the Arc of Palm Beach County. Um, so every year they have this peer-to-peer -peer campaign where people create their own fundraising pages and they kind of share their own crazy pants that they wear. Um, so as you see in this example here, um, someone has like their own page where people can donate and support them. And then at the end of this event, they have a fashion show where they showcase all of the crazy events. So they've done this every year. They've even done it virtually when COVID happened. But I think it's a really great example of like when you're talking about, well, how do I get people involved, right? This is a really great way of getting people involved that wouldn't normally get involved. And this can start off with just your board members or with just your volunteers or, or staff members. And it's also a great way for friends and family to be motivated to like support you and your page and, and you know, your fundraising that you're doing for the organization. So I hope that helps answer questions in terms of um, recruiting individuals. <laughs> All right, so here's another example. Um, this is geared more towards schools, but I think one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this, again, this is a team fundraising page, um, the Clark Shirks Readathon. So every uh, student has their own fundraising page. Um, and then um, one of the kind of incentives that they have is the student who reads the most minutes and the student who raises the most money gets a pizza party for their entire classroom. So I think that's like a really great example of how do you motivate people to raise money um, and, uh, you know, participate in a peer-to-peer -peer event. And I've just pulled up this page here. 
and just to share kind of what that looks like. So as you see, we have the team page here. If there's a new student, they can click join this team and start fundraising. And then you have the individual student page with their goal, friends and family donating, and then the set kind of description that they have. Um, so this is a really great example of kind of the like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising at like the, the simplest terms. Um, oops. Okay, and then the last example I have is the 35th annual AIDS Walk Tucson. Um, and the reason why I have this example is because this is an event fundraising page. Um, and this is also an example of something that on event fundraising you can do, which is connect with Eventbrite. Um, that's something that um, an event fundraising page on the platform you have enabled or you can enable, which is if you do have a walkathon, for example, like this, where you want people to register their spot um, for the walkathon, you can tie your event page to Eventbrite so that they first have to go register for the walkathon. They have to, you know, either pay a fee or just register whatever. And then they're going to be prompted back to Mighty Cause to start their fundraising page um, and create their fundraising page. Um, um, so this is another example of a different type of peer-to-peer -peer campaign, um, but a way if you do have like a registration aspect that you need to incorporate of how you can incorporate it. All right, so I'm going to leave the rest of the time for questions and I'll also go through our um, support uh, tools and, and creating um, team and event. But let me go back to that. Um, um, okay. Is there any communication between Mighty Cause and CRMs exporting my list of participants from an event into our CRM? Yes. So, um, there is, you are able to download the lists on your, um, from your, uh, team or event fundraising page. So you can just download that list and then import that into your CRM system. Do you do cash or check donations count as donations on Mighty Cause? How do we track that on the platform? Um, so yes and no. So the, on Mighty Cause, we have online gifts as we refer to it. So gifts made through the platform. So gifts made through the donation portal. But obviously if you have um, an, a check or a cash donation, you can add that to the platform as what we call an offline gift. Now, to clarify, offline gifts for our Giving Tuesday event don't count towards leaderboards and prizes. If you're participating in another giving event, you want to check your rules for that giving event if they're counting offline gifts or um, towards prizes. Some do, some, some don't, so it depends on the rules. But regardless, you can enter offline gifts so that they can count towards um, a specific fundraising page. So if I was the administrator for this page, I could add an offline gift. Let's say Jackson's, you know, aunt sends us a check. Um, we can add an offline gift so that Jackson's total can reflect that check that's been sent. Um, and that can all happen through the dashboard. In situations where donors don't have an email account, how do we go about getting them involved? So I think that's a great question. Um, so I think in terms of an email account, I think one, you want to consider if they don't have an email account, how tech savvy are they? Are they like, will they be able to have people donate to their fundraising page? And maybe they can, but you that is something you want to consider. If they don't even have an email account, will they be able to receive gifts? Um, but if they don't have an email account, you could create a page for them. Now it would be under kind of your name. So, you know, they wouldn't be able to have access to like who donated or be able to, you know, personalize or customize their own page, but you could create a page for them. Um, one thing I will note for that, or for anyone who's creating pages for participants is your leaderboard. Um, and you can edit this depending on, um, again, how you want set up. 
but your leaderboard will automatically show um, your organizers based off the user account name. So if you create the page for them on the leaderboard, it will say your name. However, um, I'm not logged in, but if I were to log in, I could change this so that um, it is not showing the name of the organizer, but instead the name of the fundraiser. So for example, in this case, instead of, you know, if this is Jackson's, um, maybe Jackson's mom, Brianna Wood, if I were to change this to show the fundraiser name, it wouldn't say Brianna Wood, it would say Jackson's Readathon fundraiser. And so that would show everyone's fundraiser name instead of the organizer name. So if that's something that you're planning on doing, which is, it's not uncommon, it definitely happens, um, that's something that you wanna consider changing on your leaderboard. So the org page can be up and going throughout the year. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, an org page is year round on Mighty Cause. So you can use that throughout the year. Um, the Giving Tuesday like platform is just related to the Giving Tuesday event, but Mighty Cause is available year round. For someone to donate, they will not need an account on Mighty Cause. Correct, you do not need an account to make a donation, not at all. Um, if a donor wants to create an account, they can. It will have their donor history. They can manage recurring donations, et cetera, but they not required to make an account at all. Where can I get tips on setting up our page? I like it to be eye-catching and add in text. Um, so I think that's a great uh, question to add um, or a great way to segue into our support forum. Um, so our support forum has a dedicated area for team and event fundraising, and it's divided up in based off team and event fundraising. Um, if you are having questions about what's the difference between each one and want to know a little bit more, we have dedicated articles on that. And we also have dedicated articles that will guide you through exactly how to build a team or an event. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out and reviewing these articles because it will definitely be helpful. In terms of um, uh, designing your page, we also have an article that kind of breaks down designing your page, choosing your logo, recommendations, um, how to update your page, all that good stuff. Um, and if you uh, need any examples um, that you're specifically looking for, you can please feel free to reach out to us and we're more than happy to kind of help steer you in the right direction. Um, but that is our support form is a really great uh, tool to utilize to get started in creating your page. Um, okay, do you recommend a lengthy description on the main profile page and then a brief or just description on the individual fundraisers? So um, I think it depends on exactly the aspects of your campaign. I know I keep saying it depends, but it really does. For example, if you're a walkathon, you're probably going to have a lot of details about, you know, what, like where the event is happening, how can you participate, where do you register, all of that stuff. I think in terms of your event and team page, I think you want to keep it short and sweet and get to the point. So why are you raising money? Like, What is the goal and the mission? Um, 